Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time for Off the Press. We take you through the pages of a national dailies. And as usual on Thursdays, we have Ezekiel Yaitouk. Good morning, Ezekiel Yaitouk, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you, as always. Our pleasure as well. Okay, so uh, let's start off with the Daily Trust. I beg your pardon, Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Uh, let's find out what's making it, uh, what big stories we have on the Daily Independent. Now, on the Daily Independent newspaper, the banner caption reads, the federal government to tow Lagos, Ibado, Abuja, Kanu Roads, and second Niger Bridge. Uh, that's a bold caption on the Daily Independent. Hashtag NSAS protests, federal executive council raises police salary by 20%. OK's new federal civil service framework is underneath the board caption for uh, that particular one. APC has taken Nigeria 20 years backward, says uh, River State Governor. Yes, has some weak, eh? uh, That's what you have. Justice Odile's house invasion. Federal government arraigns 15 suspects. Bandits kill Kaduna lawmaker. Very sad. Inflation rate drops to 15.40% in November. Senate approves Buhari's fresh $5.8 billion loan request. And that's also uh, another interesting caption. But for Buhari, terrorists would have declared Islamic State. Minister is quoted. Says president leaving endearing legacy of security and social cohesion. Uh, that's uh, also on the net, not entirely below uh, the paper this morning. And you also have, we are aware bandits tax villagers, Niger government or gov uh, government, state government is quoted uh, to say that. And now met once of impending poor visibility. This is some of the headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Away from the Daily Independent, uh, our next uh, port of call is the Leadership uh, Newspaper. The banner headline for this morning, Abundance Collect Levies in Niger State, Government Confirms, uh, with uh, some writers there, says uh, farmers pay terrorists to harvest, uh, bandits kill Kaduna Assembly member, insurgency terrorism won't disappear overnight, that's attributed to the federal government, insists uh, government is working hard to tackle insecurity. Above that one, just below the masthead, 2021, how CBN disbursed 2 trillion naira to 6 zones. That's just below the masthead of the leadership uh, newspaper. All right, uh, on the left uh, strip there, federal government to toll Lagos, Ibadan, Kano, Abuja roads. Uh, Lassa fever kills two medical consultants in Nasarawa. Jacob Zuma back to jail for corruption charges. Only 6,000 out of 30,000 primary health care centers are functional, according to reps. Election costs 400 billion naira census fund delay passage of the 2022 budget. North Central reject APC chairmanship position as presidency. Those are all of the stories you can find on the leadership newspaper this first day morning. All right, let's move away from uh, the leadership newspaper and check out the punch now. Uh, the board caption, hashtag, North is bleeding protest. Federal government under attack as DSS, please disperse, arrest demonstrators. That's a board caption you find. Underneath that board caption, you also have several riders. Uh, the first says, protest organizers arrested in Sokoto, Kaduna, Kanu. Amnesty International is quoted. And UN says 2.9 million people displaced in North states petition signed by 28,000. No president has funded security agencies like Buhari, says Lai Mohammed. Uh, that's the minister, minister of information and culture. You also have case rise 107 inbound passengers test positive for COVID-19 in one week. Uh, you, uh, that's according to the Minister of Health. You find that also. And federal government debt servicing gobs 
for nine trillion naira in nine months, according to the Department of uh, Debt Management. National Assembly members fear and fall DSS over you tight kidnap warning. Okay. You also uh, have another caption here. ASU meets Saturday and decides on planned strike over unfulfilled agreement. And uh, let's see if we can take one or two just before we move away uh, from the Punch newspaper this morning. Heavy security as federal government arraigned 15 suspects over Audley's home raid. Might just be dominating all of the papers this morning. And reps or the probe of Navy's $195.3 million equipment contract to foreign firm. Assembly laments as bandit kill lawmakers or lawmaker on Kaduna Highway. And woman jailed seven years for stealing and selling baby for 300,000 accomplice remanded. Now, this is some of the headlines on the Punch newspaper. And finally, uh, we'll move on next to the nation. The main headline for this morning, Presidency knocks Obasanjo others over attacks on uh, Buhari. Critics of a heating polity, says uh, Minister. One trillion naira CBN AFC NSIA fund for Lagos Ibadan Road and others. Above the must hand of the nation newspaper, 15 suspects arraigned over siege to Odalee's home. $98 million Islamic bank loan for education in Oshun, eight others. Gunmen impose ransom on farmers harvesting crops. Lagos begins prosecution of COVID-19 rules. The voters answers protests uh, request uh, police salary goes up by 30 percent. Uh, those are the stories you can find on the nation newspaper this morning. All right, let's have Ezekiel Yai to join the conversation this morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. We do appreciate your time, uh, Ezekiel. As always, thanks for having me. It's ever my pleasure. Okay, so uh, let's go straight to the crux of the matter now. Uh, let's start off, with, uh, start off with the Daily Independent newspaper. Federal government to toll Lagos, Ibadan, Abuja, Kanu Roads, and Second Niger Bridge. Yeah, um, I think that this government should get away. I don't want to say get out as fast as possible so that we can start to have proper governance. This government needs to leave as soon as possible and Nigerians need to wake up so that they can be properly informed on management of expectation. A reasonable father will tell the family exactly what his income is relative to the priorities of the family. Then the child will see reason why he or she can only eat egg once a week and not every day. All it needs is for the father to be trustworthy, the father to make full disclosure, and the children are not unreasonable, they will know what to do. Nigeria is taking on what they honestly, sincerely can't afford. And they are giving Nigerians the impression that we don't have a problem. As a result, our expectations are this high. And they cannot manage the expectation. As a result, we are just in a state of confusion. There's this paradigm that makes it difficult for us to understand if we are rich or if we are a poor nation. On one hand, we say you don't have money to pay minimum wage and things like that. On the other hand, the flamboyance of the civil servant is actually nauseating. Not civil servants particularly, I would rather say public servants. It seems my video is frozen. I wonder why this is... Can you hear me? We yeah, can go hear ahead. you. Can go hear ahead. You. Okay, good, good. We, you know, is, the, of public servant is nauseating. Let me relate it to the poll, to the tolls. If Nigerians know that we need good roads, they know that the government can't afford to maintain the roads, 
they know that if these roads have a PPP sort of arrangement, that the roads will be in good shape at all times. All it needs is for us to put up a little bit of a payment, a toll here and there. Nigerians will very, 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 I won't say nicely, but they will understand and take it. But when you go into tolling the roads and we look at the budget, we don't see the subhead on income that shows the tolls. We look at the management of the tolling and we cannot see the transparency. The Nigerians will not accept. But I look forward to a new government where the people will be respected, the people will be trusted, that the people that are entrusted with power will be trusted so that when they say we can't afford to have electricity without a cost reflective tariff, we need to have a cost reflective tariff so that we will have investors who are not going to be Father Christmas, but businessmen, but we are going to regulate it such that their margin is not, is not um, excruciating on the people. Nigerians will pay for that power at the cost reflective tariff. Then we now go into fuel. We tell them we really can't afford this one, one trillion or you know, this humongous amount that they are calling every month. So please, can we, we start to, you know, we, you see, Nigerians need to come to a point when, when they are leaving their house and switch off all the lights. Many of us have lived abroad, and we know that there are certain luxuries that we can afford. Even the heater, you know, the time to turn it on, the time to turn it off. All the appliances, you know, when to turn it on, we turn it off. But everything is free in Nigeria in a country that they cannot afford. I think it has to do with mentality to governance, and the fact that we that call ourselves the elite, the time has come when we must really wake up and inform the people properly. I think that's my take on the tolling. It's oh. a necessary evil. We need it. We need it. All we need is a government that will not, will not collect money from the people, pocket the money, and we're back to status quo. We need a government that we can trust. So maybe they should just cool down. We can manage the way we are managing until the last two years, because even also, they will now con concession these roads to the Akronis, collect money for election. These people will not have the capacity to perform, which is what happened to us with the privatization of elect electricity. And at the end of the day, we'll be back to status quo. We would have lost that money and gained nothing. So maybe they should just leave us the way we are. When a government that makes sense, in my opinion, comes, they will be able to take these decisions looking at the best people that can run this infrastructure, concession them, and we'll have a better in an infrastructure. All right, we'll slide on to the leadership and newspaper, and uh, they have security as their lead story. Uh, they caption it this way, amid security concerns, bandits collect levies in Niger state and government is confirming. What a, what's, a, what's your position, Mr. Nya yeah, uh, you, you see, when you have a government that believes more in politics than in governance, that's what you have. You have a problem in South East. The solution to the problem in South East can come. You know, there's one of the people that say that the, 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 the solution will not come overnight. What a lie from the pit of hell. I am telling you on good authority and on my honor that the problem in South East can be solved within one month within one month and i say this with every sense of responsibility it's very easy to do but do they have the political will so that the soldiers are removed from the southeast you spread the soldier you you kind of you know it, it's like you you deliberately plant things in every part of the state you spread the soldier thing and in a country like the federal republic of nigeria a ragtag army can seize territories. And you tell me that the problem cannot go overnight. It's a lie. It's an absolute lie. It's because, you know, when you see, they say, when you see a guy dancing, you should look well that there's something playing the drums for that, for that, for that dancer. You know, what am I trying to say? Have we sat down to, to profile what is emboldening this, um, this bandit? Have we really sat down? All we hear, oh, there are moles in, in, the, in, the, in the military. We've been infiltrated. 
to sound so pedestrian. This sounds so so illogical. This sounds so uninteresting. You are telling me that, that the Nigerian army does not have the intelligence. There will always be, you know, espionage. There will always be moles. There will always be, but not to the extent where you nationally accept that we have a problem. It's like we're helpless. Who's going to help us? And the day that we want banditry to stop in Nigeria, within a certain limit, it will not take a long time. I believe that clearly because all we need is somebody who comes in and these guys know that their time is up. Once they know that their time is up, they will leave. They will leave. It happens. You, you go to a, a certain state where it's like the, 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 the bandits, not bandits, uh, the robbers have taken hold of that state. And all it takes is one commissioner of police that is brought to that state. And all of a sudden, guys say, oh boy, this is going to hurt us. This man is going to take nonsense. We better relocate. They relocate. So all we need is, 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 is a security chief with, 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 with the principal, who is the head of state, or who is, the, is the Mr. President, the commander in chief, calling them and giving them a matching order and saying a private meeting that Mr. President has with the service chiefs. And he gives them a mandate and says, guys, look, between now and the next six months, this is my target. Can you take it? Can you deliver? Can you not? What do you want? What don't you want? If not so, nicely give me your, your resignation letter. I want this thing done. Enough is enough. I don't want it anymore. Six months, or you give me your resignation letter, and let me see if this will not work. What do you need? Realistically, I've been a soldier, been a general, I've commanded things, I know how things work. What are the problems? That, that meaning, that meeting that should not last more than one hour, where you like, they know what they are coming for, they, they have a brief brief, and they are coming and just talk to me, it's so precise, it's so on point. Within months, you start to see a complete, dip. in fact, right from the intel, those, 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 those that are infiltrated them, will go back to the field and say, oh boy, be like, oh, that don't change mind though. This is not the work again though. Before they come and smoke us out, we better just leave. Don't tell me that this insecurity will not leave overnight. I think that that's the worst thing you can tell Nigerians. And from a government, it's an apology. Okay. Uh, let's also uh, go back to the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Uh, if you look at, there's a pictorial representation of the protest that took place in Abuja, where you have the banner, you could see the caption, Northern Nigeria is bleeding, Buhari is sleeping, hashtag North is bleeding. Now, uh, underneath you also have, but for Buhari terrorists would have declared Islamic State, that's according to the minister, uh, you know, for information right there. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? My biggest problem is actually the honest mindset of the Minister of Information. I've sat down on several occasions and tried to, like, leave my, you know, uh, my prejudices, if I may use that expression, and really, like, just try to imagine what on the mind of this man if he sincerely means the things he says and how well he sleeps at night. I just want to know he is honest with himself. The Minister of Information seems to think that he is maybe the press secretary or the personal media person of Mr. President or that he took the oath of allegiance to be Mr. President's private staff or to defend the government. In my opinion, that is the worst position that a minister of information can take. Because at the end of the day, you alienate the people, and you are called minister of information because you are expected to inform the people to the end that a, 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 a rapprochement, a, a rapport is created between the people and the government. I would like Mr. Minister to do me a little favor. Get an independent person to give you an independent assessment 
of the mindset of the people towards him and then the government. And they, I've said this thing before on this program and I repeat it. One of my friends, he said that his father gave him an advice that he could never forget. He says, may the man who is always trusted never lie against you. May the man who is always trusted never lie against you. And I want to flip it and tell the government, may the man who is never trusted Hmm. Never be your spokesperson. Okay, Ezekiel uh, Ezekiel took just before you know we coasted down because we're out of time. I I'd like you to I totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, you know, the person of uh, the minister for information, Lai Mohammed. I know that was hot, it was getting hot, so I can understand <laughs> what we need. No, I, I I understand, but let's look at you know what he has actually said. I mean that statement okay. saying that button off with the president, you know. Uh, probably there should have been some declaration of Islamic State. What I have said. How can you make such a statement in Nigeria? But for the president doing what? But for the president doing what? Do you know the hurting families? Do you know the pains that people are going through? What is the what what is the honest thought of an average Nigerian towards Mr. President leading from the front? And you come to tell me that. But for the president, Nigeria would have been an Islamic state by now. Let him wait. All he needs is to give us six months into the new administration. And then let him come and repeat how Nigeria would have become an Islamic state. I think that if we had a command, commander in chief that was leading from the front, we would not be going through these pains that we are going through. I think what this man ought to do is to apologize to Nigerians on a daily basis for the pains that they are going through. Apologize to Nigerians on a daily basis. The Northerners in particular, who are being killed like chicken, who are being displaced like they are not humans. This is what this man should be doing. And telling you, don't tell us, oh, if not that for the man doing working so hard, we would have been an Islamic state by now. That's absolutely my opinion, Paul, that doesn't hold any water. All right, we must say a very big thank you to you. We have um, been joined by Ezekiel Nya Etok, and we uh, have indeed been looking at some of the front pages of the Daily so Thank you so much, Mr. Nya Etok. Thanks for having me. God uh, bless you all. You're welcome. Everybody. God bless you too. In a moment today in history, December 16, 1969, MPs voted to abolish death penalty. Let's see that. Thank you.